Nails have had it, but that is one clean home now. I just hope it makes a difference. Oh, come on now, don't be such a misery. Here, get yourself in that chair. Right, what are you having? Anything you like, because it's on the house. I'm not really hungry. Zip it! What good are you to chairs if you let yourself waste away, eh? No good to him anyway. <sighs> Roy, will you tell him please before these start throttling? Well, perhaps a visit with Chesney might improve the appetite. I, I could try and have a word with the social worker. Do it. You won't want to see me. Get off! Roy just met the call. No arguments. I'm starting to think he's better off without me. Oh, you get more sense from a rocking house. Oh, sorry, Liam. I've brought you Gavin. Uh, coffee and a bacon bound, please. Yeah. Oh, that's not company profits, you're blowing. How much is that? Uh, 260. No, you're all right. I insist. Keep the change. Ooh, last of the big spenders. Sit down, love, won't be a tick. Ta. Generous to a fault, that's me. As I think you'll find. That's my opening offer. What for? To buy you out. <laughs> Am I supposed to know what you're on about? Does she play hardball already? Tony. I had the sense you wanted to jump ship the other day. Yeah, well, you got it wrong. No offence. None taken. Enjoy your sandwich. Um, what am I meant to do with this? Bin it and burn it. I don't really care. But I do suggest you read it. I think you'll find that's one hell of an offer. He rates himself, doesn't he? Just a touch. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. What score? Well, they, they are amenable to a visit. Tomorrow, after 9 a.m. Thanks, Roy. You the man. Uh, I'm happy to be of service. No. Did you speak to Audrey about getting Sarah's number? Uh, not yet, no. You promised. Said I'd try. Just do me heading on this. Oh, just got to be patient. We'll sort it, OK? I just want to know what's going on. I'm still those banana. Got your memory back, have you? Well, next time you forget, you know where I am, stud. Oh, and top tip, don't tell the missus. Hey, how's that going down, then? It's great. You two have been brilliant, and I mean that. I don't know how to thank you. Hey, you want to thank us? Find out if that social worker tomorrow will dob Jane and do the rest. I'm starting to think it was a school. Well, I suppose that is a possibility. The letters they sent did express certain concerns. See? It's all my fault. Hey, come on, love. You just can't go blaming yourself. Yes, no, no, no. Becky is quite correct. Uh, given the circumstances, you've done everything that could be expected of you. Yeah? yeah? Well, not everyone thinks so. You mean Norris? How did you know? Women's intuition. Why, what's he said now? He's just got it in for us. Like the other day, he went off on one about our music. I knew it. I, 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 I think I'll change my mind and have one of Betty's hot pots instead. Okay. Yeah. Becky! I were right all along. It was you. Oh, not more of this nonsense. I mean, I've always thought you'd be dodgy in the head, but grassing up chairs and Kurt for playing your music. Now look here, young you lady. want stringing up. Okay, that's enough. This is slanderous. Oh, don't come over all innocent with me. That kid is in a foster home because of you. I will not have the likes of you. The likes this of person. me. It's all coming out now, oh, isn't it? I refuse it? to listen to any more of it this. It wasn't Norris. Stay out of this. It wasn't Norris because it was me. I contacted social services. I never meant for any of this to happen. I'm really sorry, Kirk. I just thought they'd come round and help you out. I was really worried that oh, you and I'll Chesney... I'll give you something to worry about. Becky, don't. Chesney's gone because of me. I don't blame you. I'm rubbish, me. Well, I uh, think you owe me an apology. Oh, think what you like. You ain't getting one. And I ain't finished with you. Oh, what else I can get you? A new life. I love you to bits, Kirk, but you're really starting to see my head in now. Hello? It's Fizz! I don't just flame and stand there, talk to her. Do we have to? Are you? Sorry about that. Kirk's talking to Fizz. That's a conversation I don't envy. She will be spitting the nails when she finds out. On your bike. Uh, Becky. I just came to speak to Kirk. You've got notes to say worth hearing, lady. I, I would suggest that...
Kirk is the best judge of that. We don't have traitors in here. Becky, can I just remind you that I am the owner of this establishment? Right. You know what she did? I don't know why I bother. I wish you'd consulted me before taking action. I honestly never meant for anyone to get hurt, Roy. Yes, I, I believe you. I also believe that you have Chesney's best interest at heart. If there is anything I can do, I can think of a few things. What did she say? The weather's nice. You didn't tell her. I couldn't. I'm sorry. <sighs> Not as sorry as you're going to be when Fizz gets older. Yeah. Well, for once I find myself in agreement with Becky. Your continued silence in this only serves to complicate the matter. What am I going to do? I'd start with a new identity. I should give Tina a hand. Mm. I think she'd appreciate that. Tell her not to give up on David. And Tina will be all over the place and David's angry. It may not be the best time in the world to interfere. A bit late for not interfering. He's so upset, it's frightening. And been like a different person since he met her. Now. Oh, Gail, you can't protect him from the whole world. Do you know what else? Oh, oh no, I should be off. I've got a client in half an hour. Oh, <gasps> I forgot to tell Maria to get the foils ready. Oh, I should be all pushed now because it's Margaret Alice. She's no patience. Are you answering your brain having... or answering question? Oh, no thanks, nothing else. A bit of politeness won't come amiss. Mm. You have to spend more than two pounds twenty for that. I suppose if they are apart for a couple of days, Tina can get her strength back. I mean, if they're together now, she might be emotional. Might blurt some out. Yeah, but of course she's going to be emotional. Well, at least give her credit she didn't go into this light. Like. I didn't pressure her. I'm not saying you did. Well, at least I hope I didn't. It was the right decision, the abortion. Baby, this time in our life. Oh, right. Thanks, mm. love. It's all right. All in service. Get a lot for you. A couple of squid in here. Mm. Hey, ta. For the actions, not the words. Did the you are up protective? You are. You wearing protection? Not your style. Bed Bill weren't there, either in you. You'd forget, eh? You got something funny in that cigarette or what? And Bill's not there giving you advice when you're getting some girl into trouble, is he? What girl? The one you got pregnant. You? Me? Give over. You need more than a flaming hard act, save you, if you got me up the duff. So what are you going about, Becky? Your mum-in-law and nan-in-law in here discussing abortions before. Sarah? I don't know, do I? What, Sarah's pregnant? Not anymore, by the sounds of it. So that's what's going on, is it? I think you've swerved forking out for it, then. You knew there was something going on. Flaming knew it. I'd get your hat on. She might only be two foot high, but that girl would take your kneecaps off with her teeth. Why won't you give me Sarah's number? I told you she asked me not to. The real reason, Gail? I don't think I like your tone. You're a liar. She was pregnant, wasn't she? Hey? Hey, Jason, I will not give Sarah's number out against her wishes. Gail, I have a right to speak to her. She's got a right to keep her number private. She's had an abortion, hasn't she? She has, hasn't she? No. And I don't even come into this. Sarah. You just not... close ranks and whisper behind me back. Jason, listen. Clam up when I'm nearby. Oh no, don't tell Jason. He's only the father. Jason, you've got this wrong. Keep it to yourself in the family. You like the Weatherfield flaming mafia, you Sarah lot. Sarah has not had an abortion. No? So how did Becky you talking about it? Becky. You and Audrey in the calf. Yeah, she's a troublemaker, that one. Probably still angry because you used her. 
you always hate me, Gail. Of course I am. And me family. You hate the lot of us. Oh, no, that's just silly. Hey, Can't have a Grimshaw baby in the family. Get rid, cover it up. Is that what happened to Billy? Sarah was devastated when Billy died. We all were. When Sarah left me, I lost everything. My marriage, Bethany. And now a kid I could have had. Jason, you've got this wrong. Becky, heard you talking about abortion. Well, maybe we were talking about abortion. But I swear to you, on my life, it had nothing to do with Sarah. So I suggest you tell Becky to get her facts straight before you come storming round here, banging my door down. Oh, hi, Jason. Hey, are you all right? Oh, I hope you're satisfied. What? Chesney. How is he? Gutted. But you do understand why... Lonely, it... scared, stuck. Why couldn't you give me a chance to make it right? At least with me you knew where his home was. I wasn't trying to get you Why to... couldn't you just talk to the people who love him first, eh? Come on, Smichael. Did you get that cleaning technique off Hillman? I don't think we need to hear that name, do we? Why? Looks like you're coming up a crime scene. Just a stubborn bit of gravy. Did Graham let you out early? I've been thinking about your offer to let me have some time off work so I could talk to Tina. Oh, great. You've decided to go? No. She lied to me, Mum. I don't like being lied to. Well, maybe she didn't lie. Maybe she just didn't want you to see her when she was ill. So why was she drinking? People disappoint us, David. They make mistakes. It doesn't mean they're worth giving up on. You mean like I disappoint you? You've never disappointed me. David, the big disappointment. I didn't say that. I never would. You disappoint people. It's in the genes. Do you think I could pass that on to my kids? Are you all right, David? Did Tina phone you? What did Jason want? Jason. See? Disappointing. You can't even answer now a simple question, can you, around here earlier? Well, he might have popped in, yeah. Popped in? You smacked him one. <laughs> Your memory is shocking, Mother. Was you not going to tell me? Nothing to tell. He was upset about something. We sorted it. All right, so would you say you're good, then, at sorting other people's problems out? If you've got something to say to me, David... I think it's you that has got something to say to me, don't you think? Let's hear it. What has Tina said? Classic. Jason's right. You shove people away. You and Gran, whispering. In corners, trying to get me and Tina back together. The Weatherfield Mafia? <laughs> I like that one. It's pretty funny, isn't it?
Would you let his kids live? Sit down, David. I'll get us something to drink. Tina's had an abortion, hasn't she? Oh, David. She's aborted. My kid. You knew. Admit it, Mum. Admit it! I understand you're upset. I didn't want to go behind your back. It was difficult. Yeah, but you managed it. I'm sorry. I was caught in the middle. The middle? Mum, how is going behind my back caught in the middle? It was you I was thinking of. Yeah, right. You've been so ill. What, and you thought that killing my kid was exactly what I needed? And talking that way is not gonna help. Sarah can have a child any time she likes. 13 years old, it's not a problem, but the spawn of David. God forbid. Tina's body. Tina decided. What's the Tina's more important? No, of course not. Yeah, well, at least you did a better job of aborting my kid than what you did of aborting me. Oh, David. Did you hold her hand? What? It's a simple question, Mum. Did you hold my girlfriend's hand while you killed my baby? No, I did not! Yeah, well, did you go with her? What? Eh? Did you? You're not going anywhere! No, why? Are you scared I might kill myself? Frankly, yes! Are you a blood doctor? I, I did it because I love you! I hate you! <laughs> Mum. Thanks, Mrs. Gregg. See you, my love. Oh, do you know, I could kill David. Going out for his dinner and not coming back like that. Mm. I mean, I know he's upset about Tina. It doesn't give him the right to go swanning off whenever he feels like it. Actually, I love her. Uh, would you lock up for me? Yeah, sure. Oh, bless you. I'm going down the road, have a word with him. See ya. See ya. A girl and I can't get in. I think she must have fallen down the stairs. She's just lying there. You not got a key? No, I haven't got it with me. I'm going on the back. See if any windows are open. Quick, please. Oh, it's all right. Doors oh, open. Grace. She's alive. Oh, goodness. Don't move her. Don't move her. I'll phone for an ambulance. Gail, can you hear me, ambulance, sweetheart? Please. It's hey, going to be all right, she's darling. Been... Everything's going to be it's all been right. She's fallen downstairs and she's, she's unconscious. Look, could you just go and fetch Bill, please? Yeah, of course. Hey, I've been talking to these contracts about what the flats are going to be like. Urban chic, he says. All granite worktops, slate floors. Bill! going to be like living in a quarry. Bill! Audrey needs you. Gail's had an accident. What? 
She's fell down the stairs. She's unconscious, but we've rang an ambulance. Come on. Can you hold the fort? Yeah, of course. Good luck. She's in there, mate. Okay. What's happening, Kev? <coughs> I just keep wondering how long she's been lying here. I mean, if I'd just come down earlier. Hey, hey, don't be thinking like that. You've done all you can. She's in good hands now. Um, can I come in the ambulance, please? Of course you can. Look, can I follow on in the car? Okay. Yeah, right. Oh! I've got, to, I've got to tell David. I'll have to tell him what's happened. One thing at a time. Let's get her to hospital first, eh? Becky! Oh, hiya! Next time, keep your gossip to yourself, OK? What? Well, what, what, what are you talking about? Well, that stuff about serving abortion. It was rubbish. But I did hear some, I swear. Yeah, well, it wasn't that, cos all you've done is caused me more trouble. So don't go do me any more favours, all right? <coughs> Davey, what's up? You on your own? Uh, yeah, why? David, talk to me. What's happened? I've... Come on, what is it? I know about the abortion. I'll tell you. But your mum said that you wouldn't have been able to handle it. Well, that's typical, that, isn't it? That's my mum all over. Always stepping in, thinking she knows best. Well... Why can't she just mind her own business? Well, she was right, though, wasn't she? I mean, look at you. If you'd have just told me, Tina, that you was pregnant, then none of this would have happened, it would, would it? It would! I wasn't ready for a baby. You don't understand. Would you have wanted to keep it, then? It's not about that, all right? It's about my... My mum. And how she always tries to ruin my life. So what I was going through, it doesn't really matter then. Maybe I was right not to tell you. No, look, I didn't mean that, all right? Of course it does. You are right. What do you care? We're not even going out anymore. I'm sorry. I need you. Please. I can't cope without you. Tell you. But your mum said that you wouldn't have been able to handle it. Well, that's typical, that, isn't it? That's my mum all over. Always stepping in, thinking she knows best. Well, why can't she just mind her own business? Well, she was right, though, wasn't she? I mean, look at you. If you'd have just told me, Tina, that you was pregnant, then none of this would have happened, it would, would it? It would! I wasn't ready for a baby. You don't understand. Would you have wanted to keep it, then? It's not about that, all right? It's about my... My mum. And how she always tries to ruin my life. So what I was going through, it doesn't really matter, then. Maybe I was right not to tell you. No, look, I didn't mean that, all right? Of course it does. You are right. What do you care? We're not even going out anymore. I'm sorry. I need you. Please. I can't cope without you. Yeah. Me too. Listen, why don't we go away somewhere? What? On holiday? No, I mean, like, forever. Let's just get out of here now. Where? Well, anywhere. 
Come on, let's do it. <laughs> You're mad. Well, what's there to stop us? Er, uh, jobs, family. Well, then we won't tell them, all right? All we have to do is throw some stuff in a bag and then we're out of here. And how are we going to live? What are we going to do for money? We'll worry about that later. We could go anywhere, down to London. I mean, everything's kicking off down there. Or Cornwall, live on the beach, learn to surf. <laughs> I'm serious, Tina. We could be happy. But we can be happy here. No, we can't. Oh, your mum isn't that bad. Aren't you going to get that? Please just say you will. N no, I like it here. Hello? David? Hi, lovey. It's me, it's your nan. Now, listen, darling, I don't want you to get upset, but your mum's had an accident. Well, silly, really. She fell down the stairs. I'm not sure how it happened. Is she dead? Right, no. Uh, definitely, I'll be there as soon as I can. Okay, bye. What is it? It's my mum. She's in the hospital. She fell down the stairs or something. L listen, I've got to go. I'm coming with you. No, it's all right. You stay here. No, I'm coming. Run. There you are, darling. Oh. Mm. Oh. Uh, you're back together? Yeah. Have you seen her yet, then? No, no, uh, she's... Where is it, Bill? Uh, radiology, I think. Yeah, they're doing a brain scan. So she's not come round yet? She's not said anything? No. She'll be all right, Gran. Yeah, of course she will. It's just... Well, things like this you're never prepared for, are you? I mean... I mean, you think of traffic accidents and terrible illnesses, but... I mean, one silly little slip on the stairs, it, it just seems so unfair somehow. Yeah. I'll go get us some drinks then. Yeah. Good idea. Mrs. Roberts? Yes. You can see her now. Has she come round? I'm afraid not. We've not had the results of the scans back, but as soon as we do, we'll let you know. stayed overnight. Well, there's nothing you could have done, love. Well, I didn't sleep a wink anyway, so I might just as well have been here. <coughs> oh, Doctor, how is she? Well, she's been very unlucky, but she'll live. Oh, oh thank God. So, what's wrong with her? Oh, severe concussion. There's a uh, fracture to her wrist and ankle. And a possible tear to an Achilles tendon, but we'll know when we can give her a scan. But she's going to get over it all. I mean, she's not going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. No, that's very unlikely, although she might need one for a while. So, I mean, just temper her? Yeah, three to four weeks. She's going to need a lot of physiotherapy, but she'll be fine eventually. There shouldn't be any complications. What do you mean, complications? She's, she's not going to be brain damaged or anything, is she? We won't know for sure until she's awake. And when will that be? Hopefully today, tomorrow. She will come round. Yeah. We're fairly confident of that. And when she does, you'll be able to speak to her. I'm on my own this morning, pal. Yeah. All right, see ya. Bye. So is Bill at the hospital? Yeah, with Audrey. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Any news on Gail? Still unconscious. Oh, blimey. Do you know until she wakes up if she's going to be okay or not? What do you mean? Oh, she could be brain damaged or something. What, just from falling down the stairs? No, it don't bear thinking about, does it? I wonder how she did it. Who knows? Mm. Well, it can happen to her, it can happen to anyone. Hey, lot to be said for that retirement bungalow, eh, kid? See you later. Mm. See ya. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. See you in a bit. I wonder how much longer it's going to be. 
Actually, I'm going to ring Sarah while we're waiting, tell her what's happened. I've got a new number here somewhere, where is it? Well, you can't. I mean, uh, you're not allowed to use your mobile in here, are you? No, well, there's a payphone there. I don't know. Mrs. Roberts. Um, Hello, Arthur. This is Detective Constable Weller from Weatherfield CID. Hi. Yeah, hi. Was well, something wrong? Well, um, it's your daughter's injuries. There seems to be some uncertainty about them. Uncertainty? What do you mean? Well, there's bruising on her arm that suggests it wasn't an accident. What? Yeah, we've looked at her more closely after some concern from A&E. The bruising suggests it's more likely there was a struggle than a fall. So, if it wasn't an accident, then... Well, it's possible she was pushed. No. Oh, do that. Well, an intruder, maybe. We we'll asked some neighbours if they saw anything suspicious. No, I don't believe that. Are you sure that's what happened? As sure as we can be, yeah. So, uh, I'm afraid, Mrs Roberts, it looks like we may have a criminal investigation on our hands. <laughs> done now. Sorry? If it's our trees, eh? Oh, no, it's about your next-door neighbour, sir. She was taken into hospital yesterday afternoon. Yeah, I know. We were wondering if you noticed anything unusual around that time. How do you mean? It was just an accident, wasn't it? Well, we've reason to believe there might have been a break. -in. Really? I don't know if you saw or heard anything. Well, come to think of it, yeah, I did hear some... Well, it was through the wall, shouting somebody must have been having a row. What time was that? About three o'clock, something like that. Did you recognise the voices? No, no, it was muffled, you know. How long did it go on for? Five or ten minutes. I didn't take much notice, to be honest. Did you notice anything else? Uh, no, no, I can't say as I did. What's going on? Just asking about Gail, if I saw anything strange. I reckon she might have had a break in. What time? It was in the afternoon. Were you around then? Uh, yeah, I was actually. Did you notice anything? Anyone going in and out? Anything out of the ordinary? I saw Jason going in about three-ish. Jason? Grimshaw from across the road, married to Gail's daughter. Anything else? No. Well, I did think it was a bit odd, cos he was all agitated, and that's not like Jason. Yeah, and then about ten minutes later he came back out, and he had a mark across his face like he'd been slapped or something. No. I asked if he was all right, but he just walked straight past. He was in a bit of a state. Did you see anything else? No, that was it. Uh, can I take your name, please, madam? Yeah, Clive Peacock. I live at number four. Hey, I hope you don't think I'm saying Jason had anything to do with this. Jason had never hurt a fly. That's all been very helpful, Mrs Peacock. Thank you. Tell me it's not true. Hey? You know the police think that somebody pushed Gail downstairs. What? Yeah, well, according to Claire, you were seen going in there yesterday afternoon in the state and coming out ten minutes later looking like you'd been slapped. I mean, I was prattling on this morning. You never said out. What's going on? Well, if you give me a chance, ma'am, I'll tell you. Becky said she heard Gail and Audrey talking about an abortion. I thought they meant Sarah. You know, because she wasn't taking me calls and they were being dead cagey. So I went round there to have it out with her. And? Well, she said it had nothing to do with Sarah. So what was... This mark on your face. She slapped me. She what? Because I wouldn't shut up. Did you slap her back? No. Are you sure? Ma'am, I never laid a finger on her, I swear. So when you left there, everything was all right? Well, she was in a better state than me, I can tell you that for sure. So what abortion were they talking about? Search me. Well, you know Claire's told the police about this. Oh, great. And Jerry's told them that you could hear people arguing through the wall. Yeah, that was probably us. Well, police are at the hospital now, waiting for Gail to come round. Well, fine, cos when she does come round, she can tell them what happened. Because, Mum, it had nothing to do with me. So what do you think happened? Well, they got to keep an open mind for the time being. Well... You know, um, you don't think it was an accident? It's hard to see. She could have disturbed an intruder. But, on the other hand, 
What? Well, your grandmother said that she found the back door open and we couldn't see any signs of a break-in and there was no damage anywhere and nothing seemed to have been stolen. So? So? Well, if she was pushed, it could have been someone she knew. Hi. Don't look so worried. As soon as she comes round, all will be revealed. Any bro Does she, Mrs. Roberts? Enemies, no. What well, you know, people she doesn't get on with. Well, no, not especially. Um, what would you say, David? What? No. I'd say she gets on with most people. Yeah, right. I mean, she had the odd falling out with Eileen. That's the mother of the young chap that her daughter wed. But, no, that was just the usual wrangling between in-laws, you know. Good news. She's coming round. Oh, thank goodness. Can we see her? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Now she can tell us what really happened. And we return to Weatherfield in half an hour. Gail? Gail? Here, drink this. Oh. Your throat will be sore for a while, so not too much talking. Come on. Mum? You're in hospital, sweetheart. You fell downstairs. Fell downstairs? Yes. We found you, don't you remember? Mrs. Platt. I'm DC Weller. We're just trying to find out how you came to fall down the stairs. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Keep it brief, please. Okay. The A and E staff reported bruises on your upper arms. Can you tell me how you got them? Do you remember going up the stairs? What's the last thing that you remember? Or the last person that you remember seeing? I remember. It was Jason. Jason Grimshaw. Arguing with Jason. You remember arguing with Jason Grimshaw before the fall? Do you remember what you were arguing about? Did, did he grab you? Did he grab your arms? Did Jason push you down the stairs? Do I have to do all this now? She's so tired. Yeah, of course. But I will have to speak to you again. Listen, if she remembers anything more, Please call me on this number, okay? Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm looking for Jason Grimshaw. That's me. Uh, DC Weller. I'd like to ask you a few questions. What about? Mrs. Platt. Uh, yeah, but there's nothing I can tell you. Hey, has something happened? Is she all right? No, she's fine. Just, um, routine inquiries. Well, uh, use the office if you want. Yeah, I don't mind. Or we could go down at the station. Yeah, sure. OK, thank you. No problem. Yes, Audrey. Hey, listen, how's Gail? Yeah? We just had the cops round here. Hey! Who's that with our Jason? It's the police. Said he's helping them with inquiries. Apparently the last thing that Gail remembers is having a big barney with Jason. So when can she get home, Doctor? 
Uh, we'd like to keep her in a few more days for observation. Right. I'm just a bit worried about this memory thing, though. I mean, why can't she remember what happened before she fell? Well, it's quite common that concussion can lead to some memory loss. Well, will it come back? Will she ever remember what happened? It's hard to say. She may remember something, maybe nothing. It can be quite frustrating, which is why I wouldn't put too much pressure on her. No, of course. We're just oh, pleased and thankful she's going to be OK. I'm sorry. I, I have to go. Yes, OK. Thanks, Doctor. Can you really not remember what happened to you? Why would Jason push me down the stairs? Must have been an accident. I'm sorry. What have you to be sorry for? Sorry you got hurt. I'm, I'm sorry you fell. You know, and I wasn't there to help you. I was worried about you. I really worried. I suppose you. You don't know how you feel until. So, you went round to Mrs. Platt's house about three o'clock? Yeah. Anyone else in the house? No. And why were you there? Because I just wanted to talk to her. Talk about what? Well, I heard something and it turned out that I was wrong. You know, Mrs. Platt's neighbour said he heard Ray's voices. Yeah, well, I was a bit worked up. You know, a bit of detail would help. I thought Sarah, Gail's daughter, my wife, although we split up, I thought she was planning to have an abortion. Could have been my child. And how did you feel about this? I was angry. They wouldn't give me a new number. I thought they were trying to sort things out behind me back. So you went round to confront Mrs Platt? Yes. You argued with her. Did you go up the stairs? No! No. I'm telling you, nothing happened. Yeah, we had a row. But it was a mistake. Now, I get on really well with Gail, and when I left, she was fine. Well, can you think of anybody else that would want to hurt Mrs Platt? No. There was this uh, one thing with David. What, her son? Yeah. Well, what thing? Well, he's a pretty messed up kid, isn't he? And he told me once that he dreamed of killing his own mum. What, he told you this? Yeah. And was there anyone else there? No, just me. So why do you think he told you this? I don't know, do I? Maybe he was trying to wind me up or something. Oh, do you think David's capable of trying to kill his mother? Not really, no. <sighs> OK, right. Um, you know, you were the last person to see Mrs Platt. You argued with her. She hit you. Next thing, she's found at the bottom of the stairs showing signs of a struggle. I'm sorry, Jason, but right now... You're all I've got. Perfect timing. Tea's ready. See you not last your appetite, ma'am. So is everything all right? Yeah, fine. All done. Well, for now. For now? What does that mean? Well, let's just hope Mrs Platt gets her memory back nice and quickly. Then we'll all know where we are. You know, he didn't have to come. I wanted to. I wish her. She's OK. How are you? OK. Do you want me to go, because...? No. I'm sorry, all right? Stay. It's just a lot of things have gone on, and it's... It's not been easy, I think. I should have talked to you. Yeah. You should. Can I go in and see you? Um. What? 
I, I don't want you upsetting her or anything, you know? I won't upset her. And she still is pretty tired. Well, I won't stay long. Yeah, then. Okay. Come on. So you're going to sell the plan? I'm sorry. They could turn back time. Listen, right? It, it don't matter. We all make mistakes. I'm really sorry about you, Mum. Yeah. How did it happen? How, how do you mean? How, how did she fall down the stairs? I can't remember. And you don't know? I would, I know. Has Jason said anything? I don't know. The police spoke to him yesterday. Have you no idea why you hit him? Why would I hit Jason? Doesn't seem feasible. And if I did, for whatever reason, he, he wouldn't hurt me back. I'm sure of that. Well, how sure? Has he got much of a temper, Jason? I wouldn't imagine he has. Well, something must have happened. Yeah, no, I've never really seen Jason lose his rug before. Not properly, anyhow. Then again, you never really know, do you? Oh, morning. Morning. <laughs> These lorries are a pain, aren't they? It's a constant caravan of trouble. I don't see any caravans. And you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs, Noise. So. Tell you what gets on my nerve. It's the vans that deliver the Gazette of Ammonia and the way they leave their engines running when they're getting the papers off the back. Oh, yeah, yes, but I mean, we all want a paper of Ammonia, don't we? Whereas we don't all want a block of flats on our doorstep. <laughs> well, go on then, I dare you. I beg your pardon? I dare you to ask him outright. I, I ask him what? I, I, I don't know what you're talking well, about. Well, because the answer is no. Jason had nothing to do with Gail Platt chucking herself downstairs. <laughs> oh, that? No, no I, I'd forgotten all about oh. that. Uh, have the police made any progress, do He's we know? He's forgotten all about it. They've asked me a few questions, Norris, and I answered them. So, why don't you <clears> scuttle <throat> off and tell Rita how he's uh, always struck me as a wrong one? Yes, well... Uh, Nice talking to you. Yeah, wasn't it? So you are in effect saying that by tomorrow night he could be home? following his sister's safe return, yes. I was good, I was naked, were you there, were you there? I was good, I was naked, were you there, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name, go matter, were you there? Hey, we used to sing that. Did you all laugh at the naked bit? Yeah. We did not. Well, uh, just spoke into Chess. Yeah, Roy's on front at social worker now, as if all had changed. He went out for a walk oh, with yes, his foster did. parents yesterday, hand, round Bramall Park. They bought him a cup of tea, and he drank the whole thing out of politeness. Oh, does he not drink tea? They could have offered him a Coke or an orange juice, couldn't they? Yeah. Not just assume he drinks tea. I mean, yeah. all out of 13 drinks tea. Yeah, well, he should have spoken up then. I asked him if he stuck his finger out like this when he drank it. <laughs> what did he say? He said no, he didn't. Oh. Well, as soon as he see her. Who look at Fizz and think she wasn't capable? Uh, they're routine checks. A short interview, I imagine, an inspection of the home environment, and then they can bring him back. Although she might be advised to apply for a residence order. Right. To attain parental responsibility. Of course. You know, Kirk, I, it's not for me to pass judgment. No, no, you've been brilliant, Roy. All these phone calls, all this stuff. What? 
I think that you should have told her on the telephone. And then she could have come straight home and all this would have been concluded. Oh, no. Do you want me to call her now? Tell her what's happening. She won't we worry. She's back tomorrow. I should tell her face to face. I'm sorry, Roy. I've done it all wrong, haven't I? Totally. Hiya! Anybody up there? Hey, Audrey. I just missed him. He's gone to Rove's so Al Vernon. With a quote, I mean. Well, actually, Jason, it's you I wanted to see. Oh, Audrey, you're not going to have a go at me, are you? Because if you come to give me an earful, I can promise you now I had nothing to do with what's happened. I spoke to her, that's all. Yes. And she hit you? Yeah, well, things got a bit heated, I admit. Well, that's the bit I'm interested in, Jason. Oh, uh, it's just a misunderstanding. It was private. In other words, you don't want to tell me what you talked about? <sighs> You know, love, I would have thought at a time like this you'd have gone to great pains to demonstrate your innocence. All right, look, it was Becky that overheard you and Gail talk in the calf something to do with... something to do with abortion. At least that's what Becky thought she heard. And so we assumed, well, no, I assumed that you were talking about Sarah. Sarah? Yeah, I thought Sarah had an abortion. What? So I went round to see Gail. And Audrey, I was furious. I didn't stop no, to No, no, just hang was... on, hang on, love, hang on. Just, now, you say Becky thought she heard us talking about an abortion and you thought it was Sarah? I wanted to know if she was pregnant with my kid. I was going out of my mind. Yeah, yeah, understandably. And that's when she slapped me to make me see sense. Jason, Sarah didn't have an abortion. She wasn't pregnant. I know. I realise that now. Was that all that she said, Gail? She said that it had nothing to do with me or Sarah, and I told the police all this. But I can't understand how Becky got into red about abortions. She must have misheard. Yeah, maybe. Bodger, you can understand. If you just found out you'd had your kid aborted, you'd be angry too, wouldn't you? Yeah. But I calmed down, honestly, and I left. That was the end of it. Next thing I hear, she's had a fall, and everyone thinks I did it. No, Jason, no. I can assure you that is not the case, my love. Look, if you need out else, you know where I am. Yeah, OK. Very well looked after by this chivalrous young man. They call him David Platt. Oh, do they now? <laughs> and he assures me it's going to continue once we get home. Look, grapes, coffee, chocolate brownies, three magazines. Yeah, I got one of those magazines for free, though, cos it will last months. That woman in that kiosk loved me. Hey, do you know they're all volunteers? Emily does it sometimes. Yeah? There's all bouncing Eccles cakes as well. He's keeping my spirits up, aren't you? Full of surprises. Oh, yeah. It should be nice and chilled by now. <laughs> oh! D I've forgotten to bring up the flowers I bought you. Yeah. Oh, D David, go and fetch them from the car, darling. You don't have to keep buying me flowers. No, they'll probably be on the passenger seat. Well, where are you parked? Oh, right over by the entrance to the maternity unit. Right. It's just... Well, he said there'd been a misunderstanding. Go on. Well, as far as I could make out, right, the reason he came to see you was because he got it into his head that Sarah was having an abortion. See? How? Oh, something Becky from Roy's overheard. I mean, he realises now he got the wrong end of the stick. But he did get quite agitated by the sound of things. And so did you. So that's probably why you slapped him. Do you know, I do vaguely. Maybe it's because you've just mentioned it, but I do think I remember him saying something about an abortion. Oh, there you are. Anyway, I don't think that led to this. <sighs> Maybe I don't remember. I don't know. You didn't say anything about Tina's abortion to anybody, did you? No. I don't think so. We agreed to keep it under wraps, didn't we? Gran, I couldn't see the flowers anywhere. Huh? Oh! Oh! You know what I've done, don't you? I've put them on the roof of the car and then I've driven off without realising. <laughs> <laughs> You've got some competition here, Mum. You won't have any marbles left between you both soon. <laughs> Will you be wanting to lift home, David? 
Uh, no, you get off. I'll stay and keep Mum company for a little bit. Audrey! Hey. What's up? Sweet, huh? What's going on? I think perhaps I should assist Kirk in breaking the news to Fizz. When's she back? Sometime tomorrow. Afternoon, I believe. It's gonna be like telling someone a loved one's died, isn't it? Well, well hopefully not. I mean, I'm assuming the situation can be reversed fairly swiftly, whereas death is quite final. Mm. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, he's not dead. He's just drinking tea instead of orange juice. Good night, Becky. Are you scared of dying? Well, of course. Do you ever imagine your own funeral or, or turn up, stuff like that? Chesney will come home tomorrow and all will be well. Of that, I'm certain. So let's put thoughts of mortality out of our minds. Mm. Imagine being dead, though. I mean, you can't, can you? It's like trying to imagine nothing. Have you ever tried that? Don't work. Because even when you try and imagine nothing, that is something. So, Tina had an abortion, and David didn't know about it? We kept it to ourselves. And you still don't know about it? But do you remember how vicious he was that Christmas with Ivy's Dara? <sighs> I remember Maureen. The rest of the days are blur. No, but when he discovered that Gail nearly had an abortion, do you remember how he took that? Oh, you see, I think that's what set him on this path in the first place, thinking that his mother never wanted him. And then if he thought that she'd help Tina get rid of his own child... Bill, come on, think about that. What if he'd found that out and confronted Gail, eh? You think he pushed her down the stairs? Well, yeah. No! Oh, but possibly. What, and left her for dead? I mean, he was fussing round her like an old chairman last night. Do you think it was all an act? Bill, I don't know what to think. Maybe we should tell the police. Oh, no, no. Absolutely not. I'm not going to the police, right? I thought to David. Yeah. I'm going to talk to David, right? And I'm going to find out the truth. I mean, this thing was your idea. I know, I know, I know. I'm just... I'm just struggling to imagine my grandson pushing his own mother downstairs. I'll try harder. No, look, as it stands, we have to assume he doesn't know about the abortion, so... So what you're saying is, you want to go home? No! What I'm saying is, we need to tread really carefully. Or as I keep saying, on and on and on. We should call the police no. and let them sort it no. out. No, no! Oh! oh. Morning, morning. How's girl? Uh, she's on the mend. <laughs> Touch wood. Are you all right, Audrey? Uh, yes, Ken, fine. <laughs> I thought of going out for a jaunt in the country this afternoon, but I don't want to lose my place to all these trucks. You had to park the other end of Victoria Street last night. Soon, I'll have to get a bus to get my car. <laughs> <laughs> it's all these blasted builders. Oh, sorry, no offence. I'm thinking of taking up the question of resident parking with the council. Anyway, you enjoy your day off. You too. Every day is a day off of these shoes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Right, come on, Nichols. <laughs> oh. Morning, sexy. Um, I wasn't going to open till lunchtime. I'm sorry, I thought I explained. It's all right. You go back upstairs, do whatever it is you were doing, and I'll get things going down here, open a bit earlier than planned. Well, it, it'll be quiet. Listen, YMCA ain't stopped for Easter. Why should we? Uh, no, no, Becky, please. Mm, sorry, sorry, sorry. The truth is, Roy, I, I didn't want to be hanging around my place all day. I went to a right old ding-dong with woman what lives below me this morning. You, maybe you can settle this. What actually happened on Good Friday? 
Jesus was crucified. Right. It's all right, then. It's a bit misleading, though, isn't it? Shouldn't it be called Bad Friday? Come in. I was sure it when I came back from dead. So much to do with a big stone in a park and a prostitute. That was Easter Sunday, the resurrection. Don't let Emily hear you speaking like that. David, did you push your man down the stairs? What? Why would I push my mum down the stairs, Gran? Who's put this in your head? Is it him? No, listen, listen. Maybe you didn't do it on purpose, but did you do it? Of course I didn't. The police have been speaking to Jason. They seem to think he's done it, don't they? Jason never pushed anyone. Yeah, and what makes you so sure? Just a minute. David, I'm going to ask you something now. And it might come as a shock to you, right? What? Did you know about your girlfriend's abortion? Oh, lovey, no, you didn't, did you? Oh, David. What? When? Well, when do you think? Work it out. Just before this happened. Yeah. Mine. Yeah, lovey, yeah. Afraid it was. Yeah, I was up till nearly one o'clock this morning. I just had to finish my book. Oh, I know that feeling. When one closes in on the final 50 pages. What, what was it you were reading? Up in Honey's Room, oh, Elma Leonard, oh, yeah. Right. And then I launched straight into my next. The biography. Farouk Engineer, the India and Lancashire wicketkeeper. Oh, cricket? Yeah, it's not uh, not usually my game, but I read Basil Dolivera and I got yeah. something of a taste for it. But Becky, do, do you still think you'll manage if I pop out? No, yeah, no, sir. Fizz is back from her holiday this afternoon. I'm going to give Kirk some moral support, help him tell her what's happened. What, Chesney? She doesn't know? Well, it, it seems that Kirk mislaid her details. Oh. It's a surprise he can dress himself. Hey, sit your sense down, lads. I'll be in one tick. Oh, oh. You go. I'll help out. Uh, no, I couldn't possibly. Not at all. Not at all. I've got nothing planned. Dear is off with Blanche. Actually, I was considering a jaunt out to the country, but quite frankly, I don't want to lose my parking space to this lot. I had to park miles away last night. Soon, I'll have to get a bus to get my car. <laughs> Did my mum know? We were trying to protect you. We? So you all knew? Protect me? Hey, don't get aggressive with her. Yeah, and what's it got to do with you? How were you protecting me? Oh, David, you can't even look after yourself. So you took it upon yourself to make my own decision for me? No, Tina made the decision. No one else. She just asked your mum's advice. Are you sure you didn't know? Does it look as though I did? Yes. Bill! Because one explanation might be that you found out and you weren't happy. And the next thing you know, Gail's lying at the bottom of the stairs. And you panic and start lying. How dare you come here and attack me when my mother is lying in hospital? Just leave me alone. Keep him away from me before I swing for him. Oh, like you swung for Gail! Just try it, lad! Oh, now leave it, Bill! He's lying Shut through his teeth! David, look, we all love Bethany to bits, don't we? Hmm? But where did Sarah's youth go? You don't want to be a parent at 17, darling, believe me. Saddled with all that when you've got the world on your doorstep. Just both of you. Leave me alone. Right. Well, mm -hmm. give me a ring when you've had time to think, eh? You know, you can talk to me, David Luffy. Hmm? You can tell your nan anything, remember that. Just go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. 
Got over here now. Hey, Ned. Something's happened to Chesney. Something terrible. They've taken him away. Fizz, you're never going to believe it, but guess what? Chesney's gone. Fizz, I've got some terrible news. That's right. I know. What makes you so sure? What, apart from his track record? I was watching him in there. And he knew it. Why do you think he slung us out? Time and time again, he plays the innocent. And you dance to his tune. You more than anybody else. Oh, what are you talking about? I'll have you know I've been really hard on him. You've been as soft as muck. Right now, you're thinking he did it, but you're too scared to call the police. What can we tell the police? It's just circumstantial evidence, isn't it? <sighs> Do what you like. Hey, and it's not circumstantial evidence. It's a motive. Bill. Look, I can't make that call. I'm sorry. Right now, the finger's pointing at Jason, isn't it? A decent, honest, hard-working lad. And you know, and I know... No. That... You think and I think. Then let's leave it to the experts. Tell them what we suspect and they can take it from there. The optician... I've told you. We can pay. What are you looking for? Right, OK, um, listen. The afternoon, my mum fell. You've got to say he was with me. I was with you, wasn't I? No, earlier than that. When it happened. Why? Well, why do you think? Oh, my God. You nutter, David! It was you. I still say we should have waited inside. I'd have kept a look out of the window. You could have played on the computer. No, I, I really think it's better like this. There's no chance we'll miss her. I'm dead grateful to you, Roy. I didn't sleep last night. Me and Ches were texting each other till half past five. Perhaps uh, you should have tried to uh, let him get some rest. But he's not in school today. Yes, but still. An accident. Well, she lost her footing. We were arguing, and all right, I pushed her, but I never meant for her to fall, all right? She just lost her footing. What, do you think I tried to kill her? How, how could a push be an accident? Because I never intended her to fall. Right, well, tell the police it was an accident then. Well, they're not going to believe me, are they? I just found out you and her had cooked up an abortion without telling we me. We didn't cook up anything. We're trying to protect you. That's exactly what me gran said. He was all just trying to get it over and done with as quick as possible before I had to say... No, so, so, hang on a minute. That day when you came to see me, she, she was what? Just lying there on the floor. And you knew it. You left her. I was in shock, all right? I didn't know what to no, do. No, no. The only thing you were bothered about was getting away with it. Tina, I was all over the place after what I'd just heard. Oh, don't even turn this round. What? And don't even give me the guilt trip. I can't lie for you. Oh, but you've got to, though, please. What, you can lie about being pregnant, but you can't lie about this? That was for your own good. How many times? Most lads would love to have it so easy. And technically, I didn't lie about being pregnant. I just didn't tell you. Look, whatever your excuse is, all right? At the end of the day, you've got me into this mess. You're gonna have to get me out. Let's... Roy. 
Can I admit something to you? Yeah, yes. Do you promise you won't tell anyone? Well, it's not illegal or anything like that. Okay, go on. I get a bit scared at night, in the dark. I've always been scared of the dark. Well, it, it, it is a, it's a very rational fear. We, we cannot see what's around us. I'll convince myself there's a nun hanging on the back of my bedroom door when really it's a dressing gown, stuff like that. And in the morning, I can't believe you're so stupid. Well, we're strange creatures. Especially being in the house on my own. I've had to sleep with the light on. The night before last, I just stayed up watching middle of the night telly. It's usually films about lawyers. What does quid quo pro mean? Quid pro quo. Quid. No. Quid pro quo. Quid pro quo. This. Oh, hello, boys. What's this? A welcoming party. <laughs> I'll get chatting something a bit different. What's the matter? She were going to get rid of me, you know. She's regretted it ever since. No, she hasn't. What? Did she tell you how she was going to have me aborted? No. She encouraged me to think about it, OK? Not to rush into anything. She let me know what my options were. And I bet all the time you were like, oh, she's got my best interests at heart. Eh? Our best interests. What are you looking for? I bet she was practically begging you. No, not at all. I told you, I trusted her. And she offered to pay, so... She paid? She paid to kill my child. Oh, don't say that. She didn't think you could cope, and I agreed. I don't think I could cope. I could hardly see us changing nappies at three in the morning. Yeah, well, if my sister could do it, then anybody could. Yeah, well, maybe your sister had a bit more about her than you think. Listen, my sister has got nothing about her, right? And it's not too late for us. I mean, as long as the police think that Jason no, did it with... No, forget us. You're the one that lost your temper, and you're the one who's covered it up. What is it? David! Chesney is what we're here to talk to you about. What's happened? Someone has made a phone call to social services regarding Chesney's domestic... They took him away! And there was nothing we could do to stop him! It's all my fault! It was a tip! He wasn't eating properly! He was missing school! And we were up all night on the Xbox! Where is he now? He's with a man and a woman! In an house! They seemed all right! Who made the phone call? Well, the... Claire did! Born out of no malice, rash may be, and regrettable, certainly, but... Where's the social worker's number? What are you going to do? What do you think I'm going to do, Kirk? I'm going to get him back. <sighs> David, open the door to them. I can't. Not until you'll say your life for me. I told you, I I'm not getting into this. They'll understand it was an accident. You were upset and she lost her footing. You know, you lie to me, but you won't lie to the police. Do you know how worthless that makes me feel? I'm going to open it. Don't! Hi, I'm DC Weller. We'd like to talk to David Platt. Um, come in. Thanks. David? We'd like to speak to you about your mother. My mother? Why? Has anything happened? Well, we'd like you to come down at the station and talk about what happened the day of the accident. Talk to me? Right, well, yeah. I mean, if there's any way I can help, then, obviously. Now? Yeah, if you could. I mean, I've been in more shock than anyone. You know, Jason was my brother-in-law and, well, I, I considered him a mate. Let's go. You haven't got uh, a spare chewing gum, have you? No, my last one. 
Right, do you mind if I just go and grab my coat then from inside? On you go. Don't. Please. I'm begging you. David! Just help me, Tina. Why does nobody ever help me? Will she help him? Find out in half an hour. Do you want me to tell anyone? David! Tell who? No. Ranger here, did you get in? Um, I'll wait here, Angela. You find that's right? Thank you very much, kind sir. Calls himself the builder. Wouldn't trust him with a set of Lego. Well, has he given you an estimate? Yeah, for the Great Wall of China. I've got a couple of mates. I'm going to ring them and offer them the job. Well, do you not think you'd better check with Liz before you... No? Yes, Jason? Uh, I'll have a pint, please, Sean. Come here, I'll come. You know what I've just seen? David being taken off by the police. No. Did it look like they were arresting him? It was hard to tell. But it was her that questioned me. Well, it looks like it's David's turn. But why if he was supposed to be nowhere near? Hang on a minute, let's get me a drink. Did you ring them? Yes, I did. Which you knew I was going to. And you didn't try and stop me. So if you're going to tell me now that I shouldn't have, well, I'm sorry. But it's a bit late. We'll talk about it later. <clears throat> All on your own. And that's just the way I like it. Yeah, well, some folk do. I'm surprised if you're one of them, Kel. All right, put up the close sign. Oh, yippee. Oh, no. Am I too late? Uh, well, we will say that you are just in time. Oh, that's very kind of you. Um, I'll, uh, I'll have, um... I'll, I'll just have a, a soup and a ham sandwich, please. Soup and a ham sandwich. Thanks. Right. You're uh, obviously a great lover of good food and fine wine, same as me. Yeah, only I can't afford it. That's why I come here. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you and you're going to say no, so I don't even know why I'm bothering, but do you fancy going for a drink at Rovers when we finally get closed here? No, yeah, well, you know, I won't either if I could think of it better. As well, I suppose, uh, I suppose I could, yes. Blimey, Roy! Africa's changed you! I don't think it has, no. Uh, but uh, I do want to have a talk with you, so uh, the Rover's return will provide a, a convivial setting. Ooh, what, you, you, you want to talk about what? Well, let's, uh, let's wait till we get that. Just for the record, David, um, you've been asked if you want legal representation, and your answer was... Uh, no. I haven't done anything wrong, so I shouldn't need one. Thank you. So, you and Mother's had this fall? Yeah. Except it wasn't a fall, was it? Somebody pushed her. Well, I don't know. Did they? How were things between you and her? <laughs> well, she's my mum. You don't like her, though, do you? You don't get Owen. Mostly we do, yeah. In uh, 2005, you sent a series of cards signing them Richard. What did you do that for? I suppose I thought it was funny. And I suppose now I can see, obviously, it wasn't. What? Now that you're older? Yeah. Still haven't changed much, have you? I mean, just last year we had you claiming that your mother attacked you and beat you up and had she? Well, you know she hadn't. So, what's that all about? I don't know. And then your sister getting married. What did you go and do? Yeah. I... Drive a car into the canal and try and kill yourself. Look, I'll ask you again, David. 
What is your relationship with your mother? You hate her? Yeah? No. So what's all this? All right, there have been times when we haven't got on. I would see that half. I didn't push her down the stairs. Then who did? I don't know. I wasn't even there. And maybe you? I was with my girlfriend at her house. OK. Let's just talk a bit more about you and your mother. Because we've been talking to Jason. You know Jason, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Well, he said that you told him that you wanted to kill her. <laughs> no, I didn't. He said that you were on a roof somewhere and your mother was down below and you pretended to have a gun and started shooting at her. Well, did he tell you how he married my sister? And then she left him and he's, he's blamed our family ever since? You pushed her down those stairs, didn't you? No. What happened? You were arguing with her? No. OK, uh, you were talking to her. I wasn't arguing with her. I wasn't talking with her. I wasn't even there, right? I told you I was at my girlfriend's. And who saw you at your girlfriend's? She did. Who else? Nobody else. So, um, how old's your girlfriend? Seventeen. And how, how long are you going out? Ten weeks. <laughs> Ten weeks? About that, yeah. And you think, in the basis of a ten-week relationship, that she's going to tell us that you were with her when she knows it isn't true? And then, when she knows she's going to be questioned by policemen and lawyers and she's going to have to stand up in court under oath, it's not going to happen, is it? Well, yeah. But does she hate her mother? Does she want to push her mother down the stairs? I shouldn't think so, no. Then why should you risk her neck defending you? And that's what you've done to yours. Hey, I'm Malcolm. Hey, uh, just rung them. They're coming round. Away the job up. Way. Are you absolutely sure about this? What? Well, these builds, I mean, they, they are proper builders, aren't they? Experienced and all that. Vince and Don, they could build your own a cathedral, if you want. What, in the backyard? Well, yeah, right, a smoking area, yeah. And uh, they're going to give me a quote, it's all proper and above board. Yes, oh, desperate, Dan. Pints of bitter, please, Van. Lovely. Well, I'll leave you to it. I'll see you Tuesday, Bill, yeah? Yeah, I'll see you Tuesday. Bye, love, baddies. Bye. You knew I was going to make that call. Well, it crossed my mind, yes, but, I mean, I could hardly go charging into the gents to stop you, could I? How will you know it's the right thing to do? What if the police tell David it was you that phoned? No, nah, they won't. And if they do, well, too bad. Oh, come on. 40 hours. So, um, remind me, what's the name of your girlfriend again? Tina. Oh, was that the one I, I saw at the house? Yeah. Listen, see if she gives you this alibi and it turns out not to be true. She could be in a lot of trouble, David. And I'm just saying, because if you think anything about her, which I think you do, don't you? Yeah, I suppose so. Well, you ought to think very carefully about what you're asking her to do and whether you really want to put her on the spot like this. Right? Hi, lovey. Hello, man. How are you feeling? David not with you? Uh, well... Uh, prior engagement. The police are talking to him. Talking to David? Why? Well, I suppose they want to talk to everybody, won't they? But it's got nothing to do with David. He wasn't even there. What? You remember that? Well, no. I don't remember anything. But he wasn't, was he? Well... Well, well look, the police have their job to do. And if he wasn't there, he can tell them. And are you eating properly now? Has the food improved, my darling? What's... Look, at any minute now, Maria will be talking about maternity leave, <laughs> so I don't know where that's going to leave me. David. Hello, Gran. Bill. You all right, Mum? All the better for seeing you. 
Yeah, I think we should go, because they don't like more than two visitors around their bed. No, they won't mind. Well, before anybody goes anywhere, can I just ask, who was it that shocked me? What do you mean? Well, up until this morning, it was Jason that pushed you down the stairs, right? Except now he's denying it. Then again, he would. Now, all of a sudden, they're gunning for me. Well, I would have thought what's important is, uh, are they right? No, they're not. So? Who was it? Gran? It was me. I rang him. Bill? Oh, come on, Gail. Anybody that knows him would have done the same. Anybody that knows what he's capable of and what he's done in the past. Yeah, well, thanks, Bill. No, it was me as well. OK, Bill made the call, but I agreed with him. Then I think you both better leave. Oh, Gail. No! I don't want you here pretending to be concerned for me when all the time you're going behind me back and trying to get David into serious trouble with the police. And what did he say? Well, the police. They've said, sorry for wasting your time, Mr. Platt, and can we give you a lift anywhere? Oh, come on. We were just trying to get at the truth, David. Yes, well, do it out in the open. Not in snide phone calls. Come on. We don't want you getting upset. Come on, Bill. Hello, Tina. We're back again. Where's David? I think he's going to visit his mum. But actually, it's you we want to talk to. Do you mind if we come in a minute? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, well, uh, I, I am assuming that in a perfect world, you would prefer to be in the flat rather than uh, at the hostel. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, it was great being up there while you were away. Why are you going away again, love? No, no, no. 360, please. Hey. 360, gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you, Trouble. <laughs> Very kind. That's all right. Pay for next ones. I was wondering whether you'd like to move back in. With, with me still there, so we'd be... Um... Be living together? Well, not... Am I being propositioned here? No, no, no. no. Flipping it, Roy. Africa has changed you. As a lodger. So, so you, you'd have your own room and, and, and privacy. Total, total privacy. Yeah, 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 you say that now, but different once you get me up there. Doors closed, lights out. No, no, please, please, forget I said anything. It was a mistake. I, I didn't realise how it might be interpreted. So you're spending the day with Tina? Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually. Good. Don't like to think of you on your own. I'll just let her know where I am. Especially after the way you've been treated by some members of your family. I can't believe it. Hiya, it's me. Um, just letting you know that the feds have let me go and I'm in the hospital now with my mum. What? Now? Honest? Um, right, OK. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll be on as soon as I can. Bye-bye. Everything all right? Yeah. She's just made me a meal, that's all, and just wondered what time I'd be home. Well, you don't have to stay here. Yeah, well, up and I'll go now, anyhow. But I'll call again and see you tomorrow. Well, whatever fits in with yours and Tina's plans. All right, I'll do that. Um, so I'll see you soon. And get well, all right? Bye-bye. Mm. See you, love. I'd love to move in, cos I would. So if you're still offering, like. Yes, but. I'll... Yes! Oh, Roy, this is going to be fantastic! Yeah, but, 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 we must do things properly. I, I shall give you a rent book. Yes. Yes, and I shall want one. <laughs> if only it's shorter for it to prove it's all over and above board, cos they won't believe it. You know what a dirty mind a lot they are around here. They think we're at it like rabbits, won't matter what you tell them. Please, please. I shall make a badge. Yes, folks, I am living with Roy. But it ain't what you think. So...
Oh, hi. I was just going to ring you. What's, what's happened? What have you told them? They wanted to know if you were really with me. Yeah, they would. And, and you told them what? I told him. Yeah, you were. And that's what I'll be telling everybody else. And it's even what I'll be saying in court, if they have to. <sighs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. What's wrong with this picture? Sorry? I thought we had a deal. Oh, I've had a little. Um, I'm not particularly hungry. You're going to hurt the chef's feelings. But I haven't forgotten how to eat, OK? I'm sorry. It's just... I... Stop wearing your brain out, love. It'll all come back to you. I must be still dreaming. What do you reckon? Yeah. Amazing. Why are you doing this? I couldn't sleep. OK, stop. What? Stop cleaning. Lose those gloves, cos they're seriously freaking me out. All right, calm down. Just wanted it to look nice for, you know, when Mum gets home. You're serious about looking after her? Well, yeah, I'm a son. David, wake up. A bit of spring cleaning isn't going to keep your gran away. You can't stop her coming round here. My mum doesn't need anybody but me, all right? You can't control this. Well, then what am I supposed to do? Uh, I'm in this as well. Yeah, and I'm trying to protect us. And what if you can't? I'm sorry. I know you're doing your best. Yeah. Still rubbish, though, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. At least I know you're not a total dead loss around the house. I need that hard right if there's any more from you. Hey, do you know, it's like a zoo in here. If my backside had ears, there'd be burnt black and blue bin out. An interesting, slightly confused mix of metaphor. Mixed signals, more like. Yeah, story of my life. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, extra business is great in that, but, um, a girl like me with this lot, Talk about having your wits about you. Well, you seem to be holding your own. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I couldn't do it without you, Roy. Yeah, you, you're like a comfort blanket or something. Oh, well, I, I'm honoured that you should think so, but I, I really feel that you're underestimating your own considerable talents. See? That is what I miss when I'm not here. Confidence building. As soon as I'm out that door, end of my shift. It's all gone. <laughs> so when do you reckon I can move in, then? If you're having second thoughts. Uh, no, no, of course not. Um, when would be convenient for you? Well, you know, my motto, love, there's no time like the present. Today? Brilliant idea. I'll pop out later, shall I? I, I promise you won't regret it, Roy. Memories are... Oh, it's a very complex thing. A, a mystery wrapped up in an enigma, you might say. Well, thankfully, the doctors are hopeful of a full recovery. Oh, well, that's encouraging. I, I mean, to lose one's faculties, albeit temporary, must be very distressing. Well, Gail's holding up. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, and having a family close by, that must be a great comfort to her. A a anyway, look, I'll, I'll let you get on. But, but do tell Gail she's in our thoughts. Yes, Norris, I will. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Are you ready for the off, then? Oh, well, I wouldn't say ready. You want us to give you a lift? Honestly, I'm perfectly capable of getting to the hospital under my own steam. <sighs> thought you might need some company. Lovey, I don't need you to hold my hands. Well, I, I just feel responsible. Bill, we've been through this. Look, I pushed you into involving the police. No, we did what we thought was right. Anyway, I've got to face the music sooner or later, haven't I? What if she refuses to see you? No, that will never happen. Oh, wake up, Audrey. 
We virtually accuse David of chucking it down the stairs. You can't just move on to nice weather we're having, innit? Stop fretting. It's gonna be fine, trust me. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Look, I'm her mother, and she needs me whether she likes it or not, right? Now, more than ever. Come on. Right. See, it's all in the squiggle, mate. It's all in the squiggle. Let's see. Uh, and then when the bread goes on top, the sauce is evenly distributed. Thus, more bang for your bite. Yeah, you don't get how much, do you? Not a lot. Hey! 48 minutes, exactly. I'd have been quicker, only I had to trash the place. <laughs> Becky? I'm only joking. Warden will watch me like an ought while I backed. Where are the rest of your possessions? <sighs> You're looking like love. You moved out? Moving in, more like it. Here? What? With Roy? Bet you never knew he had it in him, eh, lads? You're a braver man than me, pal. <laughs> yes, what's the arrangement, eh? Yeah, yeah, wouldn't you like to know? Uh, Becky will sleep, uh, reside in, in the spare room. Well, yeah, that's what he's telling early anyway. <laughs> I think that's our cue to leave, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Just you wait, Roy. Me and you, we are going to have such a laugh. <sighs> You some magazines. Thanks. Didn't expect to see you today. Well, I wanted to come. How are you feeling? Much the same. It's really quite cheery in here in the daytime, isn't it? Gail, love. About what happened yesterday. I don't want to hear. No. But we've got to clear the air. He's a guilty conscience, more like. I'm sorry, we both are. It was a mistake. Telling me or telling the police? Well, it shouldn't have come out like that. It shouldn't have come out at all, ma'am. How do you think David feels about it? He's not the one in hospital, is he? He's still your grandson. <sighs> it broke my heart. So you got Bill to do your dirty work Look, for you? David is a very mixed That's up That's enough. Young man. The story Man, that's doesn't... enough. There's only one person in this world that knows what happened. So until I remember, I suggest you keep your opinions to yourself. Right, come on. Hmm. And what are you doing? We're going to see your mum. What for? Well, she's in hospital, in case you've forgotten. I just want to see how she is, OK? Well, don't you think we should give it a few days? We can't look like we're hiding from this thing. If we don't go and visit, it gives your grant even more ammunition. All right, so what are you going to say? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. How about how are you feeling, Gail? Yeah, that'd be a good start. This isn't funny, all right? Yeah, I had noticed, thanks. Look, I'm not going to break down and start blabbing, if that's what you're worried about. But don't let that stop you. Tina, don't even joke about it. Okay? I hate lying to her. Yeah, well, it's too late for the truth. Well, you don't know that. They're not gonna believe me. Your mum will. We'll make her. Yeah, well, it's not up to her anymore, well, is it? Well, it was an accident. I still pushed her. OK, that's all the police are bothered about now. So what are we gonna do? We stick to the story. And then what? This contract comes through with the mother of all jobs. Yeah, Bill reckons it'll set us up for the rest of the year. Nice no, work if you can get it. Project like this is a godsend. Oh, I've told you already, it's more of a curse. It's called progress, Norris. Oh, the voice of the oppressor through the ages. People have got to live somewhere. Yeah, if people are spending money, what difference does it make? But it's yeah. ruining our community. This community isn't going to buy us six months' work, is it? And get us a new car. Spoken like a true capitalist. Let's not be counting our chickens too early, though, eh? I tell you what, if you want to get a head start, he's someone you should talk to. Apparently, he's one of the main investors. Who? Carlos Fuller. That's what I've heard. Good bit of info, aren't they? I wouldn't trust him as far as I can throw him. You think I should have a word? It can hurt. Well, whilst you're uh, greasing the wheels, so to speak, you might raise my traffic issues. Well, an upset me best new man. I don't think so, Alice. As ever, I stand alone. Spoken like a true hero. 
Hello, you two. Hiya. Uh, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm OK. On the mend, the doctor says. Oh, that's good. Um, I've got these for you. I know, I know they're only small, but... Freesias are my absolute favourite. Thank you. David, uh, will you just nip down to the nurse's station, sort out of ours for those? Yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, have the doctors said when you can come home? Never mind about me. How are you feeling? Um, yeah. I'm OK. And David? I think we both realised it would have been a bit mad, you know, having a kid. We've only known each other five minutes, so... Must have been a bit of a shock for him, finding out about the termination from my mum. Yeah, I suppose. Are you sure he didn't know about the abortion before the accident? No, um, first thing he knew about it was when Audrey said. Oh, very lovely. Right, which way's Lou? Um, out the door, turn right down the corridor. Okay, do you want anything from the shop? Uh, actually, yeah, would you get me, um, a crossword magazine, please? I've finished all these. No Sudoku, mind you, that drives me batty. <laughs> sure. Glad you two made up. She's a nice girl. Yeah. David, I'm sorry about the pregnancy and everything. Mum. No, please, just hear me out. I know we kept it from you. And from where you are now, that must just seem terrible. All I can say is I thought we were doing the right thing. Tina was in such a state. Well, Mum, you don't have to explain anything. You had such anything. a hard time of it last year. Mum, please listen. I know you thought you was only doing it for the best, and I'm dealing with it. Right now, though, the only thing I care about is you and getting better. Mm. Mind the ribs. <laughs> Well, you're definitely on the mend. Painkillers okay for you? No wooziness? Well, a bit. Quite like it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be at home by the end of the week. Oh, well, that's great news, Mum. It'll be good to be back in my own bed. You'll no doubt need a wheelchair for a bit, just for convenience, but I'm really pleased with your progress. Have you got some help at home? Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be looking after her. We both will. Yeah, of course we will. I can even uh, set a bed up for you downstairs, if you like. Well, with help, you should be fine with the stairs. I'm sure we'll manage. But, um, this memory thing... I still can't remember anything about the accident. It's much harder to predict, I'm afraid. You may regain all of your memory, or it may be gone for good. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, thank you, Doctor. You and the nurses have been wonderful. Credit to the NHS. Uh, tell all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> News. It's brilliant, yeah. I'm really pleased with you. You're a tough old bird, aren't you? I've had to be. Right. What are we doing tonight then, Royston? Uh, uh, sorry? Tonight, you and me, first night of, um, what did you call it? Cohabitation, yeah? Gotta do something special. Well, I, I was planning a fairly standard evening. Oh, come on, Roy. There's no standard about this. This is big for me, man. Go on, just tonight. No doing books, no jigsaws, no nature documentaries. Let's you and me get bladdered. Well, you know perfectly well, I don't drink. Well, you can watch me get bladdered then. Oh, come on, Roy, please. Pretty please, with a great big whacking cherry on top. Oh, well, perhaps an hour in the Rovers. All right, yeah! Just give me five minutes. <gasps> oh, you and me, Roy. We ain't half gonna start tongues wagging. <laughs> yes, Stevie boy, these are on me. Celebration. Oh, all right. Me and the Royster have finally done it. We're official, isn't that right, Roy? What's this? Me and Roy is cohabitating. It's a good word, that, isn't it? Becky is lodging with me, that is all. Yep, say no more, Roy, say no more. <laughs> there is no need for innuendo of any kind. It's merely a matter of convenience. Yes, that's what they all say. Right, come on, love, what are you having? I don't, j j just have an orange juice, thank you. Oh, Roy, have a proper drink. Go on, just this once. I don't drink alcohol. Oh, go on, Roy, be a devil. You might need it, what, with a first night with Big Gobby. Are you? Watch it. 
Or it'd be something a bit more personal than a fairy day singing from your rearview mirror. Go on, right. Just a pint, because that's not really alcohol. In what way is beer not alcohol? An orange juice will suffice. Thank you very much. Fine. Side for me, Steve. Hey. It's a bit busy in here, isn't it? Yeah. Quite a wait ahead of us, I'm afraid. Good if it's to let us know Chesney's home, eh? Yes. Well, you could sound a bit more pleased about it. We're still sulking about what happened earlier. But it was an accident. How many more times? I don't wish to discuss it, if you don't mind. Roy. And I if you do have time, perhaps you'd clear some tables. Yes. We'll come away around here. I'll get some of those. Uh, Roy, Roy uh, if you'd like a hand. Uh, that won't be necessary. Thank you, Ken. Well, you could let him clear a few tables. Uh, I don't mind. Thank you, Ken. We can manage. Oh, yeah, looks like it. Oi! And I hope you're not going to keep this mood up all day. I've said I'm sorry. You'll never guess what Roger sprung on me this morning. <laughs> He's only booked a caravan for a week in Thornbeck. I mean, all right, it's the thought that counts, but flipping Thornbeck. Hey, have you heard a word I've said? Oh, sorry, John, sorry. I wish you'd stop moping about this flaming restaurant. You're becoming obsessed. Yeah, I know, sorry. Let's talk about some else, shall we? Oh, this queue isn't moving. Come on, boy, John's got to get to work here. You positive I can't help, Roy? Well, perhaps ten minutes wouldn't hurt. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Mum? Oh, hello, Mum. I wasn't expecting you today. Yeah, well, I thought I'd bring the post from home. It were mounting up and oh, I didn't know if any of it was important. Oh, it's thoughtful of you. Oh, I've just remembered something. What? Uh, my credit card, it's overdue. Oh, well, can't I deal with that? Would you? Be a weight off my mind. Checkbook's by the telephone. So have they not said when you can leave? No. Would you want me to have a word? Well, the doctor's coming round later, so let's wait and see what he has to say. Oh, it's your call. I'm going to have the place spotless when you get home, though. <laughs> David, there's no need. No, I want to do it. Listen, I'm going to be looking after you and, until you get better, right? Thank you. But shouldn't you be at work? Yeah, well, I've taken the day off. I thought what's more important, looking after you or just brewing up for some blue rinsed brewings? <laughs> well, I hope your grand doesn't mind. Yeah, we shall have to deal with it. Well, I suppose a bit of space between you two won't hurt. Not the way things have been. Yeah. I'd rather be with you anyway. So, can I get you anything? A cup of tea would be nice. Coming right up. As you suggested, we, we did require assistance. Ken, I, I, I don't suppose you'd be interested in uh, putting in a few hours a day for me. Oi! I hope you're not cracking on, I'm not pulling my waiter out, Roy, cos I'm a grafter, me. Uh, not at all, not at all. It's just we are a little overstretched at the moment. Uh, I mean, cafe work, it isn't challenging for a man of your intellect. <laughs> but it's good enough for me. But, but it can be rewarding. Well, I certainly enjoyed it last time. Yeah, why not? Let's give it a try. Oh, excellent. May I expect you tomorrow, then? Tomorrow it is. Hey! Right. Kenny and Becky right again. Cool or what? <laughs> Bye. Oh, thank you. See ya. Yes, Lloyd. Oh, um, uh, three coffees to go, please. And an Eccles cake for Eileen. Yes. Only not too many currants, so she'll spend an hour removing some with tweezers. Yeah, it's like an episode of Silent Witness some mornings, watching while she dissects her bum. <laughs> Still mad at me for what I'm this morning, aren't you? Get over it, boy. I told you I do not wish to discuss it. All right, what did happen? No, to do with you. What, marital tiff already and you just moved in? What did you do? Clip your toenails in front of the telly? Er, uh, no. I walked in on Roy while they're having a shower, if you must know. Oh, I hate it when that happens. How are I supposed to know you're in there? Door weren't bolted. Hayley and I do not require a lock. We respect one another's ablutions. What, did you, um? Did you see his crown jewels and everything? Oh, look, just... 
drop it, Aloy. Eh, hey, you want to watch her, Roy? She makes a habit of it. She accidentally walked in on me once when I was naked. Oh, yeah, yeah, so I did. And from what I remember, Roy's twice the man you are. Look, mate, if you can find the cheaper quote for your roof, good luck to you. See, we care. That bloke's right misery is. You don't sound none too pleased yourself. Would you blame me? It's like I've got a big black cloud hanging over me. It'll never go away. Listen, lad, you've got to be patient. Gail's bound to get her memory back sooner or later. And when she does, you're off the hook and the police can finally pin it on David. Do you reckon? I'm certain of it. <laughs> hi, hi. Hello, ma. So, how are you today? Yeah, a lot better, thanks. Doctor says I could be discharged on Friday. Oh, oh, that's great news. I get the spare room all made up. What for? For when she comes out of hospital, of course. Yeah, she'll be coming on with me, Gran. I'm going to be looking after her. Oh, don't worry, dear. No, it's right, ma'am. Oh, okay, come on. How can he look after you as a lad? Well, I'm the same age you was when you had her, and she somehow survived. Anyway, you've made it perfectly clear what you think of me, Gran, but I am an adult, and I am going to be doing this for her, and if you've got a problem with no, that, No, that's to... enough, David. I want to go home, ma'am. I can't wait to get home. And it's important to David that he looks after me. Well, if that's what you want, you know where I am. We appreciate that. Don't we, David? Yeah. Of course we do, Grant. There's no need for that, Roy. I've said I'll be more careful. Nevertheless, this is a sensible precaution against further mishap. You know... <sighs> You have to lighten up when you share, Roy. And I should know. Doss was from right losing my time. Mm. There was a woman what I shared with in hostel, right? She seemed normal. Well, I said normal. She spent a day in chat rooms talking about Doctor Who or something, but I thought not of it. Until I came home early one day. Caught her on her own, in dark, rocking backwards and forwards in front of a David Tennant DVD. Oh. I had her out of there sharpish, I can tell you. I failed to see what that has to do with our situation. All I'm saying is, you have to give and take when you share. We all have our annoying little habits and, you know, just take some getting used to. Nevertheless, I prefer well-defined ground rules. It lessens the potential for embarrassing misunderstandings. Becky, I I'm wondering if I might use the facilities. Oh, sorry, Roy, love. I'll be a while longer yet. Y you have been in there over an hour. Yeah, well, I'm shaving my legs. Do you, do you, uh, do you know how much longer you'll be? Um, another half hour? You'll have to use bogging caffeine if you're busting. 